Oh shit! <laughs> Good day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here coming to you guys with some more World of Warships content. Now today my friends we're going to be taking a look at the Buffalo, a tier 9 United States heavy cruiser that will be taking the place of the Baltimore after the United States cruiser line split occurs. Now currently she is a testing ship only available to super testers and community contributors so in this video we will be offering some first impressions on the ship based on her current stats, how she plays and how she may into the play style of the line as it stands. Now before we go any further I must emphasize that this is a testing ship so any of the stats or gameplay that you see of this ship in this video may not be entirely indicative of the ship in her final build as again she's still being tested so any changes are more than likely going to occur before she hits full release. Anyway let's get into the Buffalo herself and see what she brings to the table. The Buffalo is basically what you would expect from a US heavy cruiser at such a tier level. She features 203mm guns with a high shell arc, some great island hugging capabilities, and enough AA to give carrier captains PTSD. However, where things change for her is in her gun displacement and how the guns are laid out. She features 4x3 203mm guns with an effective range of 14.1km out of the box, but with all upgrades applied I managed to get the range out to 18km, but keep in mind that with the America cruiser characteristic of high arc shells, the extra range does come with a lot more travel time, normally equating to around about 13 seconds worth of travel time at the maximum range. But the main thing to take away here from all of this is that this is now the only other American heavy cruiser with 203mm guns beyond the Pensacola, or the Salt Lake City that is being tested currently as the re-tiered Pensacola at tier 6, that features half of its guns on the front of the ship and the other half on the back. Now with things like the New Orleans, Baltimore or Des Moines, two thirds of your guns are situated on the front of the ship which really encourages bow tanking to avoid taking unnecessary citadel damage, whereas the Buffalo requires you to show a little bit more of an angle or even a full broadside in order to get the most out of your firepower. A dangerous move for a cruiser for sure. She features a 16% fire chance on a 12 second reload which really isn't the worst thing in the world but it isn't exactly anything special either when you take a look at other ships. Regardless, with the 12 rounds per salvo potentially hitting a target, you have a real chance here to score some fairly painful fire damage. Alongside that, she features a maximum dispersion of 131 meters and a sigma value of 2.0, which is a pretty standard characteristic for American cruisers, being relatively accurate and capable of landing some really tight spreads, so that won't be anything out of the ordinary here. Secondaries wise, she only features six sets of two 127mm guns ranged at five kilometers. Yeah, look, they really aren't worth talking about here because the only time in which you should ever be engaging a knife point in this ship is if you really, really want a destroyer or a cruiser out of the game. And even then, you need to be really careful to not overextend. But the secondaries here are here, so there's that. Her AA though, well, as we all know, American Cruiser AA is something to bow down to, featuring 58 DPS at the 2km range, 184 DPS at the 3.5km range, and 91 DPS at the 5km range. Now after the B-Hull upgrade, she moves up to 220 DPS at the 3.5km mark. Throw in the defensive fire ability, and... Yeah, she can be quite the nuisance to anything airborne if it sticks around long enough to feel the wrath of her guns. Maneuverability wise, she is definitely a heavy cruiser. I mean, definitely a heavy cruiser, featuring an 800 meter turning circle and an 11.2 rudder shift time, meaning that dodging torpedoes for her isn't going to be the easiest task about. For comparison's sake, the Baltimore, aka the current tier 9 American heavy cruiser, features a 730 meter turning circle and a 10.2 rudder shift time. So the Buffalo, by comparison, is going to feel a little more sluggish as a result if she takes this form after the split. Mind you, she is a tad bit faster, moving at 33 knots max in a straight line as opposed to the Baltimore's 32.5 knots. Yeah, the term a tad bit faster is very literal here. 
Now, let's talk survivability, and there is a reason that I mentioned earlier that broadsiding in cruisers can often be costly, because once we get to the armor of the buffalo, she isn't sporting anything spectacular here. And let's keep in mind here that she is a pretty big ship, and big ships are likely candidates for attracting a lot of shells and torpedoes. Her citadel is located a little bit above the waterline, primarily in the center of the ship, but only places 152 millimeters worth of plating between that citadel and a hungry AP shell. So once again, a clean cut broadside is going to hurt, with most cruisers at the respective tier level having no trouble at all scoring some juicy damage. But there is a silver lining here in this ship's armor in the form of her Citadel Arthward ship armor, which is relatively concealed and is quite well below the waterline and is also quite small. So yes, while it may only be 152 millimeters in thickness, it's again quite small and difficult to land a solid hit on, making bow tanking in this ship a desirable option, even if it eliminates 50% of your firepower. Hell, I've even had shells bounce off of me entirely while angling due to the fact that the citadel armor on this ship is only located on the actual side of the ship, on the broadside. So unless you are showing a perfect broadside, some ships may have issues in hitting your citadel accordingly. With that said, she is definitely going to feel the pain when it comes to plunging fire, only featuring 25mm worth of deck armor, and with no armor existing in the auxiliary rooms to hinder the penetration, it's not going to be pretty. So be careful of plunging fire, as it can leave you in some serious pain if left ignored long enough. Especially with the health pool of 42,500 HP by default. Now, consumer wise the Buffalo starts off with 127 kilometers detection via sea and 10 kilometers detection via the air, which only gives around about two kilometers worth of breathing room between detection and effective range, but I was able to get such stats down to 10.1 kilometers via sea and 7.9 kilometers via the air after the appropriate upgrades were added onto the ship. And it's worth to keep in mind that that then increases the gap from detection to effective range out to about eight kilometers, which is a really nice buffer to have on a cruiser like this and gives you the freedom if required to disengage from your targets. So that right there is the Buffalo as she currently stands, and she's certainly a character in herself. The whole thing about having two turrets on the rear of the ship certainly changes up how she should be played and sort of invites a high risk, high reward kind of playstyle here. High risk in the sense that you need to turn relatively broadsided to get the most out of your armament, yet high reward for getting that many 203mm shells on a target potentially, and considering the accuracy of these guns, if you know how to aim, it is possible to get some really devastating damage on targets with this ship. The alpha damage here is potentially through the roof, much higher than the Baltimore due to the fact that she's got, you know, an extra three guns on board. However, the one concern that I do have with this ship and how she's going to fit into the tech tree upon implementation is how she's going to be a chore to adjust to. As I've said before, all previous heavy cruisers bar the Pensacola are going to feature two turrets on the front and one on the rear, teaching players to bow tank in that sort of style of play. However, with the Buffalo, players who have spent a considerable amount of time grinding down the tree are going to be forced quickly to change up their play style to do well in this ship, only to once again change up their play style again when players hit the Des Moines. So we have to remember here that this isn't a premium ship that takes the American cruiser characteristics and changes them up a little bit for a laugh. No, no, this is going to be a part of the actual line of ships in the game. Sure, Buffalo may only have two more seconds worth of reload over a fully upgraded current game Baltimore. So bow taking only sees you losing out slightly by comparison to what you would have done now in the Baltimore. It's just the design of this ship that encourages a different style of play and seems a bit weird to implement such a style of play change this late in the tech tree, but I don't know. Anyway, all concerns aside, let's talk about how she plays and how she feels in her current state. Well, she's just like any other high tier American cruiser, and when I say that, I mean that she should be doing one of two things. Either A, supporting allied ships with some glorious AA firepower, or B, making an island your waifu and proceeding to cuddle it like no tomorrow. And I will say that making use of islands and proceeding to absolutely obliterate someone from the map is stupid good fun here. The 4x3 turret layout, when used to its full effect, is capable of outputting some serious damage, and the stealth aspect of sitting behind an island is also a great deal of fun. 
However, when you have to come out of the shell that is your island, then this is when the high skill, the high reward play style comes out. You really need to learn here the timing between enemy salvos and your own salvos to best angle your armor, all the while getting the most out of your firepower. Never get too greedy, never get too tunnel visioned, and always start your turns to avoid enemy salvos early. Many a time have I decided, right, that destroy that's been fucking with me all game is about to die, and thus, I now have an enemy cruiser on either side of me, and I am, oh, look at that, in the lobby. In short, simply keep your head on a swivel and know when you are overextending, and do your best to avoid such situations happening. Now, while she doesn't turn on a dime like some of the other cruisers in the game, she is capable at dodging shells and angling before an enemy has a time to get salvos off, so be sure to use that to her advantage. Another aspect of this ship's high-risk, high-reward playstyle for her is her radar, sporting a 9.5 kilometer range. Now, sometimes the team needs that one player with a radar to sneak onto a point and fuck over all of the DDs and smoked up cruisers that happen to be sitting on said point. And sometimes, in the buffalo, you need to be that player. And if you do it right, you can really turn the tide of the battle. Don't be afraid to sneak onto a point using islands for cover and using your radar to ambush enemy ships, especially poor little underage destroyers. I will, however, emphasize here that this does not override the whole idea of, you know, making sure you don't overextend. Sure, you can get a radar off, but sometimes it's just best to let your teammates get in there and do some work for you while you are spotting out your targets. Seriously, again, do not overextend here it will end really badly for you in this ship. But anyway, let's get into some captain skills and upgrades that best improve the buffalo as she currently stands. For upgrades, I took main armament mod 1, surveillance radar mod 1, aiming systems mod 1, steering gears mod 2, concealment systems mod 1, and gunfire control systems mod 2. Basically, with this build, the emphasis is on the main guns, making them more accurate, all the while increasing the effective range to concealment range ratio, and I find it to have some pretty impressive effects. As far as the commander skills are concerned, taking priority target was a big one for me to ensure I knew when I should be angling and when I could be broadsiding. Expert Marksman was a close follow-up, followed again quickly by Demolition Expert, which can be just pure evil on this ship. Concealment Expert wrapping up the first 10 commander skill points, but I would definitely look at improving your AA wherever possible, with Superintendent having some major perks with this ship as well. And folks, on that note, that kind of wraps up today's video discussing the Tier 9 United States Heavy Cruiser, the Buffalo, or at least the Buffalo, in her testing state as of the 15th of the 4th, 2018. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video and you happen to be new to the channel, then please do feel free to backhand that like button. Any support, as per always, is greatly appreciated. I'm regularly streaming on Twitch now they, nowadays, as well guys so feel free to go ahead and follow me on that platform as well so you can see some you know fun little world of warship stuff every once in a while on my twitch channel guys if you happen to enjoy today's video and you've got any feedback for me leave it in the comments section down below or even if you didn't like the video leave some comments as well guys i'd love to hear what you all have to say in regards to some feedback once again guys hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i'll be seeing you all next time take care have a good one. Yeah,